All right, my name is Ann Alton. I'm a physical therapist here at Illinois Regional Pain Institute. And today we wanted to, I wanted to talk about drug-induced nutritional deficiencies. Uh, is anybody familiar with uh, the fact that you might be having some nutritional def deficiencies based on the kinds of medication that you take? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Um, has anybody like really looked at what medications you take and just to see if? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, good, good. That's why I don't take many medications. Right. Well, that, that, uh, so, um, you can find a lot of this information on the internet, um, but basically, uh, it'd be good to have either your doctor or your pharmacist kind of look over your list of meds and really look to see what is um, what you might be missing and how to safely supplement if need be. Okay. Um, and so basically what I'm going to go through today is the main things that get, um, get depleted with taking medications, uh, what medications do that, um, what you can expect, what kind of symptoms you might have if you have a deficiency. A lot of these look very, very similar because they work on uh, very similar um, processes in the body. So it's kind of hard to tease out exactly what you might be deficient in. Um, without some blood tests or without somebody really sitting down with your med list and looking at it. Um, uh, the big one, CoQ10. Has anybody heard about this in the news recently? CoQ10? Okay. CoQ10 is um, a really, really important step in changing sugar into usable energy. It's a really, really big part of your metabolism. If you do not have that, um, you can have muscle pain and weakness can have a lack of energy, general weakening, you can get congestive heart failure. Um, and I think I mentioned this the last time around, um, kind of blew my mind, if you take your heart and you weigh it, fully one third of that heart is dedicated to your metabolism and converting energy over from sugar into the usable types of energy that your body can use. So one third is a little organelle, mitochondria, that, go ahead, The little organelle that does this job is one third of your heart's weight. So if you're not getting, if that's not healthy, you can get some really bad stuff happening with your heart and uh, with your lungs. Uh, high blood pressure, mitral valve prolapse, and cardiac arrhythmias. So what medications cause this? Cardiovascular drugs. Hmm. <laughs> That just seems backwards to me, but and you'll see this kind of as a recurring theme. The thing that you're taking for one problem couldn't very well cause another problem because of the deficiencies. Um, the statins, so I don't know if anybody knows anyone who takes a statin or has tried to take a statin and ended up with a lot of muscle pain. This is why. Because your muscles aren't getting the nutrition that they need in order to function and so they get painful. This is exactly why I started laughing at my doctor like three weeks ago. He recommended that I go on a statin, mm -hmm. and I just looked at him and busted out laughing. I said, the amount of pain I've got, yeah. I got my cholesterol back into a normal range a while back. Okay. But that was an accident. My whole life, my cholesterol's been out since I was like 12. It runs in my family. Right. It kills us. So I, I'm not going to be in pain. <laughs> so a, a very interesting book that you might be interested in is called um, Beat the Heart Attack Gene. And it talks about some of the other reasons why the cholesterol doesn't actually cause heart disease. Yeah, we well, don't actually die of heart attacks. We blow up from aneurysms. Right. It takes about six minutes. Right. Yes. And so what happens is it's more of, it's more of an inflammation process than it is um, a cholesterol problem. And so uh, the book, The Beat the Heart Attack Gene, actually looks directly at that. So that might be something that you can look into. Um, so other ones, beta blockers, like the all alls like the propol all all all, -all. I can't ever say them, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> but those those drugs that end in all all those that you probably could list a bunch off, but um, but those those can cause this diuretics. Um, so if anybody takes a diuretic for their heart, um, their blood pressure, that can cause CoQ10 to go down. Anti diabetics, and I spelled it incorrectly, but that's what I meant as anti diabetic, like glipizide. Um, antacids and anti-ulcer medications like the, H, uh, the H2 blockers and like the Prilosec and all of that stuff can cause this problem. Um, 
you will notice that those antacids and the anti-ulcer medications are on pretty much every single one of these lists. Can you get too much CoQ10? Darn, dog, I was going to look that up. <laughs> and <laughs> I, I didn't. I know no, that's a good, very good question. I do not know the answer to that. Is it water soluble? Huh? Is it water soluble? I don't know. Okay. Um, it's a. I, I believe it's a protein, but I'm not sure. Um, so that would be a, a very good thing to look up here. I mean, we could probably look it up. You might be able to do it right now. That's yeah. one of my um, questions about anything. Of everything, because can you get too much? And yeah, that's an excellent question. Somebody asked me that the other day, and I was like, oh, I need to look that up, and then it just went, yeah. <laughs> like a sieve. What, do you, what would you take instead of the, like the pyrosec or? Uh, well, so that's, that's one of the things I'm actually not super qualified to talk about, okay. I'll, although I will say that I did listen to a talk where the woman was talking about common, you know, people like who have heartburn, mm -hmm. and commonly it's not an overproduction of stomach acid, it's actually an underproduction of stomach acid. The way to find out is take a little vinegar and swallow when you're symptomatic. If it kills it, it's not acid. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah. Or if you, can't ta if you can't tolerate the vinegar, like the apple cider vinegar Ooh, is one yeah. of the things, um, a little bit of um, baking soda. No, well, that's but that's the opposite direction. Yeah. Opposite. Okay, so that's yeah. going to make the acid go down. Okay. Okay. So if you you want something acidic like um, lemon juice, you know, squeeze a lemon or, okay. or just, you know one of those little <laughs> lemon juice things. Um, if that if that kills the problem, like you said, it's then the your problem isn't too much acid. Your problem is not enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so sometimes people can take like digestive enzymes that will help with that and to improve that acid. But what happens mm -hmm. um, is that you're, you get into this vicious cycle with these anti-ulcer medications where you take it and then the digestive enzymes that are supposed to help you digest don't work. And so then you don't digest as well, so then you get heartburn. So you take more of the anti-ulcer stuff. And again, so I mean, it just, it changes the whole pH of your, oh, of your wow. stomach so it doesn't, um, if you get that acid, acid neutralized way too much, your food will come out and wet with you. Yes. Seriously. Really? Oh, yes. yeah, I've been there before. Yes. We fought <laughs> this. I ended up, I used pH, uh, litmus paper to check pH uh -huh. of everything. And my pH was in the toilet. It was highly alkaline, which caused me all kinds of cold yeah. problems. And that's caustic, too. If you can get it in the middle somewhere, mm -hmm. you're yeah. good. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the body is, is, is really trying hard to keep it where it, where it needs to be. But sometimes we make it very hard on it. Now I'm of the opinion that you should probably more be a little more towards the alkaline. Uh -huh. Acid is a cancer thing. Yeah, yeah and, and I've, I've heard some of this, and I haven't done a whole lot of research on it, um, but the thing about it is is that, that acid, acidic foods tend to make your body produce alkaline because you're trying to stay in the middle. So um, some of the things, the foods that you think you should eat if you're going to try to go more towards alkaline are actually more acidic than you think they should be. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, it's a very confusing thing. And, um, you know, it's like, wait, wait, you mean I can't, I can't have, you know, can't have, I don't even know. But yeah. yeah. But oranges and grapes are, are, are better. Then, yeah, I don't, anyway, it's just, it's very, it's backwards, okay. and it's really, like, I've looked at the list, and I'm like, this absolutely makes no sense to me at all, so I need to do more research on that, but, but you're right, they're finding out that um, if we, the, if we can tend a little bit towards the alkaline side in the body, um, that tends to be a healthier environment. However, again, I haven't done my due diligence research on that, so <coughs> if you're interested, go check it out. Um, all right, so, and then antibiotics are another one that can rob your body of CoQ10. Um, and antibiotics, without a doubt, are absolutely uh, life-saving. Um, but as we have probably learned over the, the last, you know, 30, 40 years, something that's been overused. Um, but just as one, one of those things that if you have to be on antibiotics, you might want to, you know, really, really kind of support your body into getting back to its original state before the infection started. Um, zinc. We don't hear a whole lot about zinc, um, but you may have seen like the zinc tablets that you can get for for the your colds and flu, mm -hmm. and that's because it really works very hard on the immune system uh, with within the immune system. So um, it 
helps with healing um, with your not only your immune system but like tissue healing times and um, you good okay um, you can burn over here if you want okay all right probably get loud so. <laughs> okay all right um, it uh, basically but it also helps you know the immune system but also with the uh, with with tendons and ligaments and so forth um, so other tissue healing as well um, it increases the effects of GABA and you can tell I typed this out like super quick today because there's a bunch of typos um, but GABA calms the nerves so uh, zinc will increase the effect of this so um, if you've got nerve pain you might have you know, um, you're not helping things if you're low on zinc as well. Put it that way. All right. Um, it can increase brain healing factors, uh, so like the neurotropic factors, which helps to um, repair nerves, repair uh, brain tissues as well. Um, it's required for converting thyroid hormones into their active form. So if you have a thyroid problem and you have low zinc, you're you're not helping out, you know, you're not helping yourself. Um, and it's also a component of insulin. So what, is a, a, a look, what does it look like when uh, you have a deficit? So you can have acne, um, an impaired sense of smell or taste, frequent infections that last longer, night blindness, hair and skin, nail problems, uh, fatigue, and high blood sugar. That's when you can get too much of. And that's when you can get too much of. Yeah. I take this about every day it'll help a man with his man stuff yes uh, and it will kill a prostate infection better than anything yes I, I've actually heard that that it, it uh, it's actually really um, it's one of the few things that can actually get into the prostate blood flow is just too small right I had a deal where I went six months antibiotic after antibiotic and you can imagine what it did to my intestinal oh, of course it yeah. destroyed me and finally I called my brother who's kind of into this stuff mm -hmm. so you start taking some zinc and I'm like you really think zinc is going to solve this problem they're catheterizing me twice a week right and he goes just take two a day and then once it clears up take one a day but he goes in five days it'll be clear and he was right wow. I've never gotten off of it since yeah, yeah zinc's good alright that's that's really good so which meant um, ACE inhibitors uh, which is a it's a blood pressure medication um cardiac medication. Diuretics, again, the antiacids and anti-ulcer medications, um, antibiotics and hormones can deplete your body of zinc. Um, so potassium is the next one. Um, what, what potassium does is helps regulate blood pressure and a normal water balance. Um, helps with muscle contractions, nerve impulses, digestion, heart rhythm, and pH balance. Well, anybody who has had cramping and try to eat a banana and it goes away this is what that this is what that is okay <laughs> all right um, but a lot of times even heart rhythm like heart arrhythmias um, will be a sign that you ha are low in potassium um, but you can also have some edema uh, muscle weakness fatigue and dizziness okay and the ones that do this the channel calcium channel blockers um, they're the ones that end in dipine um, I don't know if you can remember any for me David I didn't write them all down because um, I was in a hurry. Cardiazem is one. Um, I think now. Um, I had to put them on the spot. <laughs> um, <laughs> calcium channel water. Anyway, um, you could always look up your medication and see, what, see if it's a calcium. Can we get too much of this one? Um, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Uh, digoxin is another one, cardiac, glycoside, diuretics, um, antibiotics, hormones, NSAIDs and opiates. So a lot of us in here take NSAIDs and opiates. Um, so that's one that you can, that can deplete that. So just kind of and keep that in. Like yes, Correct. Motrin yes. and naproxen. Yeah. And <laughs> okay. All right, magnesium. So what it does, and I didn't list them all, but it facilitates over 300 chemical processes in your body. Uh, we need this one, big time. Um, you can get too much of it. Uh, however, 
The good thing about magnesium is when you get too much of it, you just get the runs. So you know to <laughs> just back off. Cool. And in fact, some bottles will say this, that you take it and then you add a pill each and every time you take a dose until you get the runs and then you back off to the dose that's below that. So is that the only side effect of this one? Um, it's the first one. Okay. So you so can once probably, you get you know, there, back off. Yeah, once you get there, back off. Because I got um, some tendonitis in the front of my foot right now, mm -hmm. which makes shifting today like uh -huh. a little pain. Yeah. So I'm pounding that stuff right now. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, so yeah, when you get to that point, back off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But that this one, what a deficit looks like: muscle cramps, weakness, insomnia. So you, people may say that you you know try to take this before uh, bed. That will help you to sleep better. Um, there are some, I will say there are some types of the magnesium, there's like magnesium citrate and magnesium something. Oxide. Oxide. Um, one of them is better for? Glyc magnesium glycinate. Glycinate? Glycinate. Glycinate, okay. Um, and so there's some, there's one that's better to take before bed that has more, it somehow works better on the muscles than on the digestive system. I haven't really looked too much into that. Um, but um, uh, other things that you can get with magnesium deficiency, uh, loss of appetite, uh, gastrointestinal disorders. Um, so like the, um, again, the constipation, that sort of thing. Um, kidney stones, interestingly enough. Osteoporosis, uh, nervousness, restlessness, depression, confusion. So there's a lot of brain stuff. Um, fatigue and high blood pressure. And the medications that do this are digoxin, um, cardiac glycoside, cardiac drugs, high blood pressure. Imagine that. This is just, it's one of those things where it's like, okay doc, I understand you want me to take this and it's probably a necessary thing, but can we talk about, you know, preventing things from happening on down the line? And, you know, so uh, the, the guy that I heard this, this talk from Initially, he was talking a lot about how, you know, doctors aren't really, they're not necessarily putting it together because they see you and then they see a bunch of other people and then they see you again and they, you have a whole set, new set of, of issues and they treat those issues, but they're not necessarily, you know, looking back in your whole history. And so they'll put you on statins, you know, and then three years later you come back with, you know, issues like cardi um, just heart failure. So it's like, so, you know, knowing about some of these things and kind of advocating for yourself, okay, that's great, I might need a statin, but can we do something to make sure that we don't end up with congestive heart failure later on because we're low on CoQ10. Um, again, we're at the diuretics, we're anti-acids anti and anti-ulcer medications um, and antibiotics and hormones with this one as well. Uh, the next group, vitamin B, so there are uh, like 12 different kinds of vitamin B, well, yeah, more than that. Um, I had just grouped them all here, okay, partly um, for, for brevity, but also um, partly because they are very similar, um, but the symptoms that you have can kind of indicate which vitamin B you might be low in. So kind of understand this is a, a global list and it's not, it's not exhaustive. Um, Vitamin B is very important for the nervous system health, for red blood cell formation, and turning sugar into usable, um, usable energy and digestion. So what a deficit will look like is really low energy, increased pain, um, neuropathies, anemia, depression, confusion, memory problems, skin problems, easy bruising, and loss of appetite, and sometimes even food sensitivities. Um, the medications that do this are the potassium supplements. <laughs> you just can't win for losing, can you? <laughs> um, diuretics, uh, blood pressure medications like the hydrochlorothiazide and a couple of the other ones. Um, metformin, which is an uh, uh, anti-diabetic. Antacids and anti-ulcer medications. Did I say that? That was a big culprit. Um, and I think that may be a big part of what's going on in our country is because we just, we pop these bu puppies like they're nothing. They're over the counter so we assume that they're safe. Um, and not, not really. Um, 
the boxes say do not take more than two weeks without consulting your physician. That's, yes, it does. It does say that. But, you know, when do we ever listen to what's on the box? <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling great right now. Don't need anything else. Let's go. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Alrighty. Um, antibiotics, hormones, and again, uh, the NSAIDs like the um, Aleve and Motrin and those, um, and opiates. Can we overload on B? Uh, no, it's water soluble. Okay. Have you researched B17 yet? No. I'm going to send you a paper on that on Facebook. Good. I you look it up. Yes, please. It's uh, a cancer cure. Oh, okay. It's a thing called amygdala. All right. It'll blow your mind when you see it. All right. I like having my mind blown. Cancer don't like cyanide. <laughs> <laughs> Neither does the human Wait, body. I was going to say, I was going to say, you know, that's, that's, cyanide's kind of antithesis to life, isn't it, in general? Well, in that form, your body can't open it. The only thing that can open it's a cancer cell. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Very interesting. Thanks for all right, um, so healthy gut bacteria. Well, I've got a couple more for today. Um, no, no, we don't. We've got much more. <laughs> Whole other page. All right, um, so healthy gut bacteria. And if uh, there's, there's, I did a whole thing on the gut. Um, it's on YouTube, so you can check that out. But basically, the healthy gut bacteria is important for breaking down food. Um, extracting nutrients, maintaining your intestinal lining, and it helps to make the serotonin. Okay, it also helps keep other bad bacteria at bay, or at least in lower, um, lower concentrations. Um, and in actuality, not all of the what we consider bad bacteria, like the C. diff, if people hear about C. diff, that's not actually a, a bad one. It's only bad if it happens in like huge quantities, but it's actually really necessary for our bodies to make vitamin K. So it's one of those things where we need this balance, okay, and then we, when we take some of these medications, that throws off that balance and then we're in trouble. Uh, but the deficiency looks like gas or bloating, constipation, diarrhea, um, chronic yeast infections, bad breath, um, poor immune function, depression and anxiety, and again, sometimes food sensitivities. Uh, the medications that typically do this are anti-diabetics, uh, antibiotics, and, and other hormones. Um, iron. So <laughs> iron, this I got creative here, it's the little taxi that takes the oxygen around to your blood cells. And that's pretty much what it is. Um, it's a really important part of hemoglobin, which is that actually the little taxi, but without the iron, hemoglobin doesn't actually, isn't the right shape to hold the oxygen to take it to where it needs to go. Um, it also is important for hormone production and cell and connect connective tissue health. Uh, so again, um, if you're having issues with chronic um, tendonitis or something like that, you may have an iron issue. Uh, deficit looks like anemia, uh, fatigue, weakness, dizziness, and difficulty concentrating. Can we take that? Yes, you can. Uh, yeah, no, I don't actually know. Age, 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 sex, all that stuff. You it, <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, but you that's one that's fairly easy to get um, get a blood test on. Um, you know, even just going in and get, giving blood, they'll tell you where it's at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it, But it'll be the free, free circulation, but not the store iron that they'll see. You know, yes, that's true. In the blood blood. Blood. Um, okay, so the medications that do this, the antacids and the anti-ulcer medications, um, osteoporosis drugs like the biphosphonates, uh, antibiotics, hormones, and SEDs and opiates. Okay. Uh, there's, really, there's really no drug that doesn't have a side effect to it, so, um, you know, it, I, I know it's frustrating, but, um, you know, you can talk to your pharmacist or your doctor about taking just a really good... Um, multivitamin that should help with a lot of these um, and shouldn't give you too much of any one thing um, and in fact some of the the US RDAs are so much lower than what your body can actually tolerate an example of this and it's not on this list is iodine um, iodine our US RDA of that is like 350 micrograms okay mm -hmm. and the average that uh, a woman in Japan gets through her daily diet is 12 and a half gram or milligrams. 
Okay, so it's exponentially larger than what they give us for our USRDA. It's just enough to prevent a goiter, really. So you can afford to take a lot more than that. Um, so, but talking to your doctor or your pharmacist, again, is really important. Um, just going and trying these things can, can lead you down the wrong path. Like I was, uh, we were talking last week about, you know, taking, an anti, um, taking a multivitamin is great unless you're on a blood thinner, in which case you don't need vitamin K can't have vitamin K and that's typically one of the things they put in a multivitamin so you have to be careful okay I, I didn't do well on multi at all really the guy naturally you're sick cut them in half because your body didn't place the rest of it so take one in the morning one at night yeah but I did my body didn't like it yeah well my body doesn't like the the uh, the B, B vitamins that come in your normal pills um, there's there's such a thing that that actually I think up to 60% of the population in the United States doesn't actually process B vitamins as well. And uh, I did a whole thing on that. <laughs> That's also on the internet. <laughs> um, but, but so, so I mean, you do have to be careful and you do have to talk and if things aren't working well, you know, listen to your body, obviously. And, and you can, there are things that you can do to figure out whether or not you have that particular gene mutation on the vitamin Bs. Um, all right, vitamin C. This one you cannot get too much of because your body just eliminates it. Um, it's a powerful antioxidant. It helps the body to form and maintain connective tissues, including bones, blood vessels, and skin. Okay. Um, what a deficit looks like, slow healing, easy bruising, and one of the first signs in a lot of people is bleeding gums. And that one works really well. Yes, it does. My wife, when she had uh, breast surgery, uh -huh. She healed and netted inside of about seven days. Of course, she wasn't smoking, but she was pounding like 3,000, you know. Uh -huh. And it, you know, I saw that and I thought, you know what, as much as I get hurt, I should start doing it. Uh -huh. Man, things heal up like boom. Yeah. yeah, it really does help. It really does help. The other thing that helps is not smoking. <laughs> <laughs> It, it really does help. Somebody, yes. Somebody seconding oh, no. that. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. Um, okay, so what medications do this? Um, can I say it all together now? Antacids and anti ulcer medications? <laughs> um, biphosphonates, so the osteoporosis drugs, antibiotics, hormones, and says opiates. Uh, so the next, actually the next uh, two are the same meds do it for, for, for these two as well, the calcium, uh, the chromium and the calcium. Um, chromium, we don't hear a lot about that either, but it helps to move the sugar from the bloodstream into the cells um, to be used as energy and to turn to fats, carbohydrates, and proteins into energy. So, and that, that sentence means makes absolutely no sense. But basically, it helps move the, the sugars from your bloodstream into the cell and then to change other types of energy like the carbohydrates the the proteins and the fats into energy as well so it's important for both of those steps um, a deficit is going to look like poor blood blood sugar control we worsened levels of weak bones and uh, bone loss low energy fatigue poor skin health uh, higher risk for cholesterol and heart complications and low concentration, poor memory, and worsened eye health. So can you get this stuff? Chromium, it's typically in your in, a, or in, in your, your multivitamin. You can't just buy it though. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff you can actually, you can buy over the counter in like separate can supplements. Can you get too much of this one? That I don't know, but I'm gonna assume yes. Because I saw some things in there that I could really do some help with, especially eyes and fatigue. Right, right. Um, so I'm, I would say that probably um, one of your compounding pharmacies, like the Essential Wellness or um, Prec Shot, so that'd be probably uh, given in like a like something you put on. Through the I don't know. That, that's a good question. Maybe you might be able to. It says there it are some food, <coughs> some food sources of chromium are um, yeast, lean meats. Cheese, whole grains. Sorry, yeast, um, <laughs> lean meat, cheeses, whole grains, um, molasses, spices, and some brand cereals. So I've got an excuse to have a T-bone about that thick. Yes. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. 
you know, grill it, it's healthier for you. Huh? Grill it, it's healthier for yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> it is, the guy told me that. Okay, so well, anyway, yeah, it's <coughs> cleaner. His cholesterol went down since he started grilling food. All right, so really? Yeah. You eat so See, my bad cholesterol. Buying charcoal in the winter nights. Too much. Kind of my good cholesterol's not enough. Well, no, I grill all year. Yeah. At 12, I had bad cholesterol. That's a manly man. Yeah, yeah, and if I mean, you know, there are just there are some people with genetically high levels of cholesterol, and the thing about it with cholesterol, and I and not I'm not trying to discourage anybody from taking cholesterol medication, but in terms of cholesterol, there's a cholesterol is the vehicle by which this is the little taxi by which that your your the fats in your bloodstream get to your cells so that your cells can use it for energy. Okay, we do need to have cholesterol. And if you're high in cholesterol, your body perceives that there's a need for it. And sometimes if you take medication to lower it, sometimes it's just gonna go right back up anyway. I mean, your body's gonna fight to keep it up. Yes, so mine's 220. Yeah, yeah, that's a little on the high side. But a little, you know, it's not stupid. You know? Not 400. No, okay. that's good. Oh, no. Well, the race was more important. Oh, okay. Yes, the ratio is important. And we're actually finding out that in terms of cholesterol, um, even the LDLs, you're better off if there's if you have the, there's two sizes of LDLs, and so you're better off if you have the larger size LDL than the smaller size LDL. And so if you get a, um, one of the doctors to actually check what kinds of LDLs you have and what the ratios of those are, you may you may not even have a problem. Uh, so again, what what. Uh, but medications, antacid, anti-ulcerates, um, osteoporosis drugs, antibiotics, hormones, and sedes and opiates. Okay. Um, calcium, this was one that a lot of people are pretty familiar with. Um, it's really, really important for life. Um, in addition to building bones and keeping them healthy, it, it helps our blood to clot. Um, it helps the nerves to send messages um, and muscles to contract, and about 99% of the calcium in our bodies is in our bones and teeth. And what often will happen is that people who have osteoporosis actually have a deficiency in calcium. So the body will say, well, I need that for the heart to contract. It's more important for your heart to contract than it is for this muscle or for this bone to be strong right now. So it'll kind of leach that calcium away to make sure that you have enough in your system uh, to run the day-to-day -day things. Okay. Um, so a deficit will look like confusion or memory loss, uh, muscle spasms, numbness and tingling in the hands, feet, uh, depression, hallucinations, muscle cramps, weak and brittle nails, and easy fracturing of bones. And again, antacids, anti ulcer medications, osteoporosis, antibiotics, hormones, NSAIDs, and opiates. So, anybody think they might have some deficiencies? <laughs> Where do we want to start exactly? Um, so, you know, in terms of in terms of uh, you know addressing some of these, the safest way to do this is um, is with diet. Um, and and I know that's a lot easier said than done because um, shopping in the on the perimeter of the the grocery store feels a lot more expensive um, but I, I like to remind everybody that there is no such thing as cheap food nope. <laughs> you will pay for it mm -hmm. either today or or right. tomorrow yep. um, and so if you uh, think that you can't afford some some of these foods you know, years down the line, we're, we're doing $9,000 worth of MRIs. Gotcha. <laughs> there you go, yeah. So, um, I, and I actually have found that it's not nearly as expensive as I thought it would be to make everything from scratch. Uh, and it's not nearly as difficult to make everything from scratch. Um, I kind of bought into the whole thing of, you know, it's much easier to, to take, you know, to open this little package and dump that in and you know and actually you know that's kind of what you're doing when you're making something from scratch you're just yeah it's, it maybe takes there's a little bit longer there's more dishes as well huh <laughs> there's more dishes there's when you're making it yeah that's, yeah that's although although up. like i said i think i think i mentioned this last last month i asked a, a chef friend of mine 
do we need to you know take do this and then set it aside and then do you know do this part and then make it just so you know do it no just dump it in it's not it's good it's fine <laughs> Just dump it all in the same pot. It's okay. End up the same place. Well, I didn't offer words of encouragement it. if they're if they care. Um, yes. Yes, please. Um, progress of the king today, in spite of the police. Um, I had uh, I have a bad back, and I took ibuprofen for many, many years, and without a lot of insistence by anyone to take it with food. So they and and I ended up with constriction in the intestine right after the stomach so the food wasn't going down obviously it was coming back up um, long story short I had two perforated bowels which is no much not much fun when they blow and they ended up taking over 30 percent of my stomach and having to do a complete gastric bypass not mm -hmm. for weight loss but because of all the damage well, I still had trouble still had trouble and this that and the other and finally changed my diet and got rid of gluten and dairy and my body's absorbing iron now. All my blood tests are fabulous. I feel so much better. It is a drag to give up gluten and dairy, but I feel so much better than before. Wow. I mean, I had bloating and gas and, di you know, alternating the diarrhea and constipation and, you know, just felt lousy most of the time. And my, my body was not absorbing iron. They were giving me iron infusions. And my free iron is good, and my iron stores, all the ferritin levels are going up. And all I did was based on diet. Gluten and dairy free. Gluten and dairy free. And dairy as well. Okay. Gluten and dairy free. Yeah. Did you so. make that decision on your own, or did you have a doctor, nutritionist recommend that? Well, or a friend, or? I I made the decision on my own. It helped that my daughter came home from college when she graduated with a bad, her stomach was bad and she gave up gluten and dairy. So there are two of us in the house, but I think I would have whether she was home or not. And it just made a world of a difference. And the top three things that cause inflammation in the gut is gluten, dairy, and sugar. Yeah. And it's made a world of a difference for me. So, yeah. So that's actually a question I have is that we're having difficulty getting our doctors to look at this more holistically. They just it's just again, it's always medication. So right. you have a symptom, we'll give you a band aid to fix it. And this is really the root of the issue. So other than just going rogue and being like, okay, we'll try gluten free and dairy we'll, we'll do that. We can do that. But I guess it's always like throwing darts. What yeah. is your suggestion of getting and I'm articulate, I can advocate for myself. Sure. But I ended up talking with a struggle. pharmacist that is interested in Mm -hmm. Research and we have a pharmacist, right? And, <laughs> and sometimes, it's funny, right? sometimes it's funny the right person, right? And that's what I'm finding. But I mentioned, a lot of I mentioned last week to my doctor when he looked at my blood test, and I said the only change I made was diet, and I told him what I eliminated, and he kind of rolled his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and I don't really care if he rolled his eyes. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Our, our doctor did the same thing as she had her diet soda on her desk. By the same token, I don't know what to ask for. I don't know run this panel for X, Y, and Z, but you ask them and they're really, yeah. they scoff at it. So, so I would, um, I can give you a couple of names of people to come see. There, um, there are a couple of chiropractors in the area that do some functional medicine. And that's the buzzword for holistic. Functional medicine. Functional okay, medicine. Okay. Functional medicine. Yeah, when you say holistic, it becomes uh, not real. It becomes <laughs> crazy. It stuff. becomes yeah. woo woo yeah. hippie stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not that at all. It's that wrong, wisdom but. that has been well, the, the the Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I think, you know, certainly, I you know, as far as diet changes go, I, I advocate for myself. Um, I also did something very similar. Uh, but I did an elimination diet where I took out a bunch of things and then tried to add them back after my body had kind of settled down for a little while. Um, it took about a month and then I would try to add something back and, and watch what happened. So I would just add, um, I added eggs back, that was fine, there was no issue there. Um, I added um, dairy back and I broke out like really bad. Well the skin and the gut are made from the same types of, of they're both epithelial tissue so I figure 
if my skin is breaking out, then probably my gut is also having issues with the, with the dairy. So I cut dairy out. I didn't add it back in. Um, and again, the same thing with gluten and a couple of other things. Um, and that's been about two years, and that cut my pain in half. I think every single person is a little bit different. And so this is why I say the elimination diet is very helpful because if you take out five or six things, add it back in, see what you react to. Okay, because some people time, really can't do well without something fermented in their in their diet. And some people can't do fermented stuff in their diet. And so I think it's, I mean, it's different. But I'll give you a couple of names of some different people in the area that, that do functional medicine that may be able to kind of help.